Welcome everyone. This is Simon speaking here with Battery Associates. Today we want to talk about cylindrical cells and power cells. We're actually here at 10 power, which is the number two right now for power cells, looking at power tools and major small power applications. So again, they know what they're doing. They're like a tier one supplier here in China. And um, yeah, I want to walk you through some of the developments they have, some of the data they share with us. Unfortunately, we cannot really film the manufacturing, which is understandable. Maybe we can put something in, but probably will be a bit more difficult. So again, we will share some of the data we got from them with you now. So let's go. Please join me moving around here. This is the showroom. And what's interesting, if you come a bit closer, we can start with some of the cells. And then I'll walk you through some of the developments they've done over the last 10, 20 years. So yeah, maybe if the camera wants to come closer and closer. So we see some of the different form factors here. And we actually want to start a bit on this side. So if you just stay here, so 18650, that's probably like the form factor many of us know. It's been, you know, a very common one being used in power electronics and, um, you know, power tools. Um, they have many really impressive products and customers we know from the West, from you know, Europe, but also in the US. Again, through 28, we cannot really show this right now, but it's really impressive to see. So if you ever have a chance to, to meet with them, discuss that, I can encourage you to do so. So of course, we see lots of different ones here, 18650 here on this side. And then also we see more 2170, which is a bit of the larger form factor, which also got more popular, especially in automotive as well. And then again, if you want to come a bit closer, just understand a bit some of these cells and understand what they kind of offer us. So one thing we can see here, for example, without kind of messing it up too much, if you really come a lot closer, please, so we can really see and try to read it a bit together. Again, in other videos we spoke about, for example, um, sodium ion being attractive from a temperature window. Internal resistance, of course, very important for power electronics. And again, so then we have different kind of data sheets and we can see them range. This cell, for example, impressive, goes to 40 amps. Uh, other ones are more 15 amps, 30 amps. For example, this one, um, this is also very impressive. You see here like a 30 amp for an 8650. So this is a really high C rating, right? We can look at here. Um, so that's, that's, that's really exciting to see. So let's just sit down a bit now um, and walk you through some of the things they shared with us, which I just found quite interesting. And please stay close to me so you can see me as well. I'm sure you have seen the cells, so we don't have to focus too much on the cells right now. So yeah, one thing they already share with us, so again, they have about 12.91% of the major small power market share. Um, you know, Samsung SDI being, being larger than them. Um, also for, um, then they're looking at the power tools. Um, and OPE, we look more at something at 19, 20% against Samsung SDI being number one there. Um, and then also interesting, I think, if you look at um, overall of the cylindrical cells, they have about 4.74% of the market. Other major players, just you've heard about them, are Samsung SDI, LG Energy Solution, and Panasonic. Of course, Panasonic also with Tesla, and LG Energy Solution with Tesla has seen this massive growth. These are numbers from 2022, um, so they're a bit older, but again, um, I think it's still relevant to, to be aware of. So again, they have lots of really exciting plans, um, you know, expansion, they're looking at Malaysia right now, um, got some you know, exciting support there from the government. If you're curious, reach out to us, can tell you more about these things. Um, what's then interesting, they shared us a lot of data about their manufacturing. Again, they're very proud of it. They want to be, you know, this tier one, or they are a tier one supplier for these major brands. So they're actually sharing a lot of data, which was really interesting to see. Like one data point, for example, looking more at the yield of their production, 93.72 total first pass yield. They even went in depth sharing with us the yields for each individual process step. Give you one data point here, for example, the coating machine, they have an 99.88% yield and at the calendaring machine, 99.97. Again, we have a lot more data, so please, um, if you're curious, let us know in the comments. Maybe we can do a follow-up or also we can get in touch another time. Another thing also, which was interesting to see also a bit like who are their suppliers, what equipment they're using. Really again from positioning, they really see this, you know, as Samsung, LG as their kind of major competitors from the market for, you know, the products they're developing. So they're actually, most of their equipment is either Korean or Japanese, pretty much half-half. They only have one major Chinese supply for their equipment. So 
essentially all of the process steps are either Korean or Japanese, again, really solidifying their competition. And now you might be wondering, why do we care about you know, cylindrical? Automotive is very strongly dominated right now from prismatic cells. See a lot of growth there, like CRT and any other players. Also in other videos, we talk more about best, like energy storage systems. Again, very strong through prismatic cells, LFP, etc. If you look at the markets there, are, um, you know, we're looking at power. And power requires cooling, heat development. So nuclear cells are actually pretty good for that because you have the spacing in between. You can do some great cooling solutions there. Um, also, otherwise, you know, from a form factor, right now we saw earlier the 18650 as well, the 2170. Um, of course, 4680 is also a form factor they're looking at. Um, it's still in development as the report. We know, of course, Panasonic is pushing that. Also, Tesla has been pushing that as a form factor. What's interesting now is if you look at this 18650 and 2170, um, they have a lot of different iterations, right? So, if we, for example, look at the capacity from the 18650, we started off more from 2 ampere hours for the cells. Now, they're actually going more to 3.5, so getting closer to the 4 ampere hours. And for the 2170, actually, they can go up to 6, but there's also some which are about 5, and they kind of have this number of 4 megawatt hours, ampere hours, which is in between. Um, and of course, that's something on the energy cells level, right? So this is more about energy optimization. Um, again, look at more 10 amps, um, 15 amps maybe, but this is the energy cells. For the um, high power cells as well, just let me look up the data here. Um, what is, there's also NCM, NCA high power cells. Um, we're looking a bit more lower energy densities, right? So which makes sense. The capacity is a bit lower um, here. It's, um, you know, ranging more than 1.5 they started. Now they're going even to, you know, um, to um, 3 and closer to 4. Again, different on the form factor as well. And um, again, here we can go to higher amp rating. So they can go to 40 amps, 45 amps. Um, so really fast, you know, charging rates and discharging rates, which again is really interesting for some of the really high power application, like power drills and others. So again, um, you know, quite interesting also see the progress there. Of course, safety is a big concern, looking at also electric bikes and scooters. I've seen that even in Germany, right, where now in Munich, um, electric scooters are banned on transport, on the local trains because of, you know, fire concerns. Um, of course, tb one supplier, they, don't, they, they mentioned to us they didn't have any issues with safety. They actually track all of their cells, which is also interesting. And again, from a European perspective, looking at the battery passport, they actually reported to us in the tour that they have been the first company who had a QR code in every individual cell and tracking all of the data for every individual cell, which I think is quite interesting to see. So they have been actually quite early on that. Again, that's something in 2027, which is going to be required in the EU as part of the battery passport. Um, and of course, there's a small internal product um, checking and a lot of other Chinese companies we visited have something similar. But yeah, so they um, again have that, but again, it's not readable for other people at this point. Another thing also, of course, safety, like thermal stability they shared with us, actually how they're surpassing, like the UL rating, 1642, and also other companies I won't mention right now, um, again, how long these batteries can last at high temperatures. They're actually doing, a, um, you know, they're raising it to 130 degrees for over 90 minutes, 100% state of charge, and make sure there's no incident with that, with their cells, so something they're quite proud of. A lot of other safety features like Kotex separator, which is a bit more standard maybe, but also many other kind of engineering um, optimizations they had. Also for other markets, um, like India they mentioned as one, which has like new regulations in other markets, Europe as well. So they of course always have to stay on top of that as well. And yeah, shared lots of interesting um, insights on, on their supplies, which again, I cannot really talk about too much right now because we would have to be under NDA. Not fortunately, all of us are not under NDA, but we're trying to share with you as much as we can at this point. Yeah, so I think this is just a bit of a snapshot. Again, cylindrical cells, of course, we know the Teslas with the 4680 format and 2170 format, 2170. Um, you know, our companies using that, other some premium players well in Europe, BMW has been using them with asphalt. Um, Many others, again, going to prismatic, but again, there's a big market out there, right? Like from consumer electronics, I think, uh, you know, an 8650, many of us have seen. We're also developing these battery cyclers, which also can run with these cells. So again, we have personal experience with, with these measurements. 
And there's, there's quite a lot of you know, market for that, electric bikes, scooters. But also maybe one thing which I find quite interesting, and it's a big topic also here in China, but also in other markets in the US and others, is robots. Um, even in the hotels here, we have these robots you know, coming with you, cleaning. Um, every floor they're going in the elevators, they're pretty autonomous at this point. Um, of course, we're going also more to humanoid robots, which also need really energy dense cells, and also high power for different applications. Again, especially in these factories, uh, we want to have more automation, so robots can be very interesting there as well. And I think that's one of the growing, for example, potential areas for these kind of cells. And otherwise, again, all of us have their cells around us, be it from an electric vacuum or being a power drill or maybe even a laptop. So hopefully you enjoyed that a bit. Um, we couldn't share as much today, unfortunately. Um, it's also a public company, so it's a bit more tricky then to, to get some of these insights. Um, um, you know, we have to make sure everything we share is also public information. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. And yeah, tune in very soon. Again, this was Simon from Battery Associates. And again, 10 Power, thank you for showing us around here and giving us insights. Leave your questions in the comments. We want to get back to you if we can, or otherwise get in touch with us. Maybe we can share a bit more then. And also, please subscribe. We really want to grow this channel. There's many videos we have planned for China, but also other regions around the world. So please, if you want to give us a bit of encouragement, keep subscribing, keep commenting, liking, speak very soon. Thanks, everyone.